Conrad suit. Misfortune comes uninvited. It hungers for blood, craving eternal darkness. The time to repent is over! I will take up arms again! Step out of the shadows and teach them true darkness! Everyone, say hello to my main. The Black Prior, released at the start of last year under the year name Vo under the season name Vortiger, the Black Prior brought in a new age of darkness for the world of For Honor. The moment his trailer hit, I was sold. His design was badass. His trailer was badass. His weapons were exactly what I wanted in For Honor. And his move set? <laughs> The man has the ultimate defensive capabilities in game, hands down. But we'll get to that. There's no one else like the Prior, and I ro and I rose him through the ranks of reputation faster than any other hero, hands down. In short, I love Black Prior, from design to personality to concept. Now, the Black Prior actually does have a lore and for honor that the devs created. Supposedly, they were a highly pious and honorable knight order, but then fell to darkness when they began serving Apollyon, the main villain of the campaign. After her defeat, they slipped into obscurity and now have returned to help the knights win this war at any cost, showing a distinct lack of chivalry and honor in their methods that even make the knights uncomfortable. But if the for honor devs will forgive me, I'd like to make my own take here. When I think of the Black Prior... I think of a dark emissary, warriors who have waited patiently for the other factions to cease their attacks on their kin, and have given them time to repent and turn away. But the time to repent is over! They are done waiting and being merciful. They will now bring that dark justice of God upon the heathens and heretics. It is time for them to awake, the ones who sent us screaming into oblivion and who now lie sleeping. Let's drag them out of bed by the hair and remind them of what we are. We will remind them of what it feels like to live in fear. We will remind them of the sound our jackboots make against their throats. There are more things between heaven and hell than are dreamt of in their philosophy. But enough. It's time to talk weapons and armor for the Black Prior. So what does the Black Prior come equipped with? Well, the armor here is pretty awesome. We have leather and black steel armor with cast iron fittings. There appears to be some chain mail underneath the cloth here. That belt, um, not sure how much protection it does. It looks leather, but looks pretty cool. I like the crown around the helmet there. Uh, well, not really a helmet. It's more of a hood, but we'll talk more about helmets in a minute. Uh, that is layered plate mail covering the shoulders and arms. Looks really, really cool. Um, overall, I oh, oh, and I see greaves down there guarding the feet. Very nice. Uh, overall, I'd say that the black prior looks very well armored so what about his weaponry well let's see he's carrying himself an arming sword and a kite shield i highly encourage you guys to go to check out shadversity he's a youtuber on uh out there that i really really like who talks about these kind of shields and swords he has a long he has a great video on the kite shield and why it's probably the best shield ever made i'll let him deal with that but just know that the kite shield here looks amazing it looks really really awesome uh it's a great defensive tool uh and you'll see how the black prior uses it as an attacking tool as well and the arming sword while it's not as long as a long sword it can be handled one-handed um double-edged um fine point to the tip can can slash and stab in equal measure uh lightweight very easy to use very easy to handle with a shield in the other hand it is a great combination of offense and defensive capabilities he's a and he's just a nightmare to fight and speaking of which we need to find out how does he fight but before we do remember how i said that we'd talk about that helmet 
Say hello to my Black Prior. That is what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in on that. This helm is a helmet underneath the crown. I think it completes the look even better. Makes her look like a total Dark Lord of Justice. I mean, that's freaking terrifying. Um, we have some shoulder ornaments here that look like a lion. Um, we're wearing some black steel armor to add to the darkness effect. Um, the shield is also ornamented into sort of a vampire effect, which came from a Halloween event not long ago. It just... Oh, look at this. It looks so awesome. I love, 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 love this design. It's got to be the most awesome looking Dark Knight ever. But okay, okay. Done goo goo ga ga over this. Let's talk about how she fights. The Black Prior has a two combo move set. Light, 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 heavy, heavy, light, or heavy, heavy. The last heavy attack of any combo is always undodgeable. So I can do a light, a heavy, and if I combine them together... Note the blue aura that surrounds my sword with the second heavy. That shows that it is undodgeable. Now, the Black Prior has a few other capabilities, such as the fact that she can do a shield bash. All shield heroes can do a shield bash. There are two ways the Black Prior can implement it. She can do it from a basic stance like this, by dashing forward and guard breaking. Doing this grants a free light attack. She can also do it by starting a heavy attack and then soft feigning into a shield bash. And this also grants a free light attack. Black Prior can also do a dash forward heavy, which is an overhead thrust. Pretty handy for a quick uh, attack, and it can be followed up with any other attack. The combos just keep coming. But you see, despite all these things, it is not this that makes the Black Prior so wonderful. It is this. Bulwark Stance. Bulwark Stance is probably the best thing ever given to the Knights in For Honor. It is just like the Conqueror's full block stance, but with a few differences. The first difference is that you'll notice my stamina isn't draining. His is. Look at his stamina draining while he's in his position. Mine isn't moving. I can keep this up as long as I like. And with the right perks, it will actually heal me while I'm in this stance. And it can block any basic attack from any direction, as my brother will demonstrate. Any attack will hit, but it will only drain a little bit of stamina and nothing more. Now... The Bulwark Sands can also do two more things. From the Bulwark Sands, I can do an unblockable side heavy attack, which can then be followed up with another combo hit. But it is this next part that made the Black Prior a legend. The Black Prior can do what's called a repost. This attack works like so. If timed correctly, the moment the attack is about to land, Black Prior can flip an opponent over them using the shield and then do an automatic strike. You don't need to hit any other button. The strike is immediate and automatic. Now you might think to yourself, but Cliff, you say, that only works with basic attacks. If they try to use an unblockable attack, it'll get through. Will it? Yay! Oh, but Cliff, you say, if they try to do a shield bash, they'll get through it. BE GONE! Fuck. You are saying... Nothing gets through this. The only thing that gets through this move is literally a guard break. Granted, when the guard break happens, you can't defend against it. So it's very important that you use this bulwark stance properly. But if timed correctly and used at the right moment... It can turn a match around for you. People have gone insane fighting Black Priors because of this move. In fact, it's the ultimate ganking tool. If I'm ganked from all sides by other players, four, I've been up against four players who have all attacked me at once, used this technique, and done damage to all of them. It can even, da it can even do damage to players who aren't attacking me but with are within the range of the secondary sword strike. I've ever played. So... Final thought on the Black Prior about how you play her correctly. 
Simply put, don't be too aggressive because people will definitely um, use that against you. But make your defense your offense. Turn a fight around by dropping into your bulwark stance and making them regret trying to challenge you. Once you're on the ground, throw in a few lights. The lights are incredibly fast and hard to counter. If you feel like your opponent's got a really good defense, use your shield bash and a light to break open their defense. If they've got a really good offense, use your bulwark stance to counter their offense. No matter what your opponent does, the Black Prior can counter it. Why? Because she is the messenger of darkness. She is the ultimate warrior in For Honor, in my opinion. They're, every warrior is unique in their own way. There are some warriors that have better combos, longer lasting combos, can use their stamina more effectively. But in my opinion, there is no better balanced and, be and more useful character in all of For Honor than the Black Prior. And guys, that does it for this how-to video with the Black Prior. Let's move on to her executions. All right, guys, a Dark Lord of Justice like this has to have some really good executions as well. So let's take a look at them. But be aware, there aren't a lot to go over here. So let's get into it. Mala Ultra Suit. <laughs> the red eyes make it. Oh, that's brutal. I love it. 10 out of 10. Falling back on the shield. Reaching up. Slow slash and dead. Just toss him off. 10 out of 10. That is so awesome. Perfect. Slowly but surely. Another 10 out of 10. 10. Just look at this! Knocks aside the arm, impales the foot to hold them, and then... Oh, that's so awesome. That is so, so awesome. 10 out of 10. So cool. Don't you turn your back on me, Harry Potter! I want you to look at me when I kill you! I want to see the light leave your eyes! Up to the hill. Yay! Okay, really, really cool here. Um, a little unrealistic that you could use the hilt to f uh, yank them so easily into the flip, but I don't mind that too much. Uh, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Very, very cool. It's just, oh, it's so awesome. Very, very cool. Just look at that finish off. It's so badass. Great work. All right, severe sentence. <laughs> I appreciate him just lying there for this to happen. I guess she knocked him out or gave him a concussion. And oh, that's so awesome. Uh, but let me see one more time. Make sure that the sword actually made contact with the neck. That is great. Yep, looks like it just made contact. 9 out of 10. Amazing. This is such a good execution. I have a little bit of trouble believing the shield would stay standing, which is why I give it the 9 out of 10, but this is still really, really cool. Vortiger's Reckoning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see. When did he die? There? There? Or there? I think right here. He's dead. He's done. And punches him off. Removes the sword. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. This is so cool. I love the beatdown. I love the last punch. It's so awesome. It's so arrogant. It's so fierce. No regard for human life. I love it. Face your heresy! Spinebreaker. Ah, yes. I gotta give it an 8 out of 10 because it honestly just takes too long. This is probably one of the longest executions in-game. 
I mean, it gives the enemy team plenty of time to come over and stop you, but it's so badass. It's just, you, you shove them to the ground. As you're struggling to get up, get on top, plant the shield, shattering the spine, and then kill. It's excellent. So easy to do. Just, oh, I love it. I love it. Eight out of ten, though, just for the time it takes. Limb Slicer. Okay, this may be one of the few that I'm not a huge fan of for one reason. This, I said before, and I'll say it again. Arms should not come off that easy. Unless there's a blade on that shield to make it come off, that would not happen. But I will give this credit because it's, to make up for that last one we just saw, this is incredibly fast. The moment that arm came off, you're done. So, hard to call, but I think I'm going to go with a 5 out of 10 because that part's stupid, but the speed of it is amazing. So, yes, 5 out of 10 for this one. Elizabeth's prowess. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's watch it piece by piece. Slash at the leg, bring him to the knee, stab into the neck and knocks out with the shield. Very, very cool. Great use of the shield to pull the sword out. Very, very nice. I love it. All right, this one's a 9 out of 10 for me. 9 out of 10, really awesome. The, the, oh, I just don't even know what else to say. It's just too cool. And that is all of the Black Prior's executions. Yeah, that was it. That, not a lot. So, final notes about the Black Prior. There's a reason she's my main. There's a reason I chose her to be my main warrior. There's a reason the moment she came out, I knocked her reputation all the way up to 19 as fast as I could. Why? Because she's just that awesome. She's an incredibly defensive capable warrior. She can turn an opponent's attack into her advantage. She's good in one-on-one -on -one and group fighting. My advice about her, defense is the best offense. Take full advantage of your bulwark stance, allow your opponents to make those mistakes, faint in and out of it, keep your opponents pressured, keep them guessing. If you can manage to lure one away from the rest of the pack, work them out of the pack and slice them up one by one. Just dominate the battlefield with the sheer power you possess in that kite shield. Don't be afraid to shield bash either. I know a lot of people say that it's toxic. No, you take full advantage of that. It is a tool you can take full advantage of. Guys, that has been the Knight Faction. I'm a Knight Faction myself. I sided with them. And after going over all of them and looking over all of them, it reminds me how much I love their aesthetic. I love them all the way from... The, all the way from the Warden all the way to the Black Prior. They've all been so much fun to look at, so much fun to go through. But I'll be the first to admit that a lot of these videos have taken a very long time to do. So what I'm probably going to do with the next few videos is I'm going to break them up into two parts. I'll spend the first part of the video looking at their design, armor, history, and movesets. And then another video looking at their executions, just so that that way we can save time. But guys... This has been the Knight Faction for the first part of my For Honor analysis series. I'm going to take a very short break so that I can write up the scripts and do a little bit of gameplay with the Vikings, but they will be my next look. And we'll tune in next time when we talk about the vanguard of the Viking Faction, the Raider. We'll see you then, guys.